On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1993, we're going to be taking a look at April Wine, and they're going to be performing You Could Have Been a Lady. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So um, this one from 1993 was recorded on tape, so the visual quality isn't that good. The audio quality is okay, you know, we can deal with it. And we will be comparing this actually to the original release by Hot Chocolate to see how it differs. But let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. Okay, I'm just going to jump in here. As always, there's a link in the description below. If you guys want to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it, just click on that. But getting into this performance, I love that, I mean, we're just so straight ahead here. Obviously, we've got a lot of distortion on the guitars and uh, it really is a hard rock version of the song, really. But I love that we've got the harmony vocals still in there and it is guitar-tastic. I think we have three guitars, if I'm not mistaken, here. So it means that we get the opportunity to hear the guitars harmonizing with each other when the riff comes in. We've actually got a couple of riffs. There's like a lead riff and then the main riff of the song, which was on the original as well. But it means that they can split that up octave-wise. So one can play the lower octave, one can play the higher octave. So it gives that riff a really full sound, but also, as we'll get into a little bit later, even though it's not a long performance, we do have guitar solos coming up, which means that we're always going to get that rhythm underneath the solo, and that sound isn't going to drop out at all. So I've grabbed the guitar, and before we jump into any of that, I want to mention the original by Hot Chocolate, and we'll have a little listen to that as well. But it's interesting in that the Hot Chocolate version got released in 1971, but right at the beginning of the year. And April Wine released their version in late 1971, and that was in Canada, and then early 1972 in the USA. And it did well for Hot Chocolate. It got to number 22 here in the UK, but it was a huge hit for April Wine as well. You know, not only in Canada. I mean, it got to number two in the Canadian charts, so it was a huge hit for them there but it got to number 32 in the USA so again that was a huge hit when it was released in early 1972 but anyway the interesting thing is how they've changed this song and how when it was released by Hot Chocolate it isn't you know that long after the initial release that April Wine decided to do a cover I'm just going to play it really quickly a piece of the Hot Chocolate version so that you can listen to the difference So 
so we can hear straight away that we're a lot cleaner. There's still a hint of distortion on that guitar, but let me take it back a little bit earlier in the intro so you can hear the horns. And very much dominated by the bass, just being up front, and you get to hear that bass line as soon as we come in with the song. It's just bass and, you know, a little bit of percussion going on, but really just our hi-hat to keep the rhythm in there. So, when we now talk about the April Wine version, a lot heavier. It's interesting as well that in the riff on the original, actually we are a semitone lower with April Wine's version. Let me just check that, going back. Yeah, so. It means that, you know, originally it was in D, so now it'll be in D flat. And the riff that we have um, on that original, it's actually that kind of approach. We've got lots of alternate picking in there. And you might find that when you're playing this riff, you hear notes that actually aren't in there because your brain is kind of filling in the gaps with these ghost notes, especially when we play it in D flat, like April Wine are playing here. We've got this, that kind of thing where if I slow that down, we had, and then a pull off there. And then there's a couple of ghost notes in there that I think your brain thinks is there. Like that, but I'm not playing that, I'm going... And it's really subtle, but it's just one of those things about your ear and what it does. It tends to fill in gaps when it can just hear a muted note. It thinks, oh, that must be that note. And it kind of fills it in, makes you hear a note that's in key, but it's not going to work. If we go down to the open, open D string... It's not going to work like that. Whereas in the original key, now we're going, you know, now you can go to that open D if you want to, you know, but it's still, you can still apply that same technique of not actually playing that note and it's going to kind of sound like you are. I've actually just changed my tone and I don't make different tones for different videos. I don't go into that depth as long as you can hear what I'm playing, but I'll just put it on the second preset. If you guys have a Fender Mustang LT25, this is preset number two because I needed to be a bit heavier than what I had. So we've now got that kind of sound to our power chords that we we're just playing. And yeah, you've got the option of either playing just the two notes like that, which is just our root note and our fifth, or the root note, fifth and octave when it goes as far as that G string. But anyway, it means that we're running down and we have this. It might be a little run up into the intro. Let's have a listen. Okay, so we've got this kind of bend with vibrato. Along those kind of lines. And when you start to play the riff with this heavier sound, we get... That kind of thing. So, it's even more pronounced as if we're hearing... That. But we're going... We're just putting in those ghost notes, those alternate picks. And that's something that, yeah, if you want to play this, you want to practice that alternate picking and palm muting as well. And pull off. Kind of like that. Just to 
get it to sound relatively similar. It's great as well how straight ahead the rhythm is, how solid the rhythm is throughout this whole performance, the drums and the bass just driving it forward the whole time. And from a tempo perspective, of course, we are faster than the original by Hot Chocolate. But maybe in this live performance, we might be pushing the tempo a little bit compared to the record that April Wine released and that's something that tends to happen quite a lot live especially when you've got a big crowd and you want to put a little bit more energy into the performance you just raise it by a few beats per minute and that's probably what we've got here so we'll jump back into it and we might watch it all the way to the end or I will jump into it again if some guitar kicks off but we'll resume it where we left it <laughs> Okay, so we're now into a bit of lead guitar, and we did have a quick key change there, actually, which was from that D flat to now the E flat. And in this solo, it means that we're starting with this bend. <laughs> and the bend happens quite a lot. So uh, he's just straight into that, and all we're doing really there is bending up to the root note of the chord, so it's always going to sound great. And this is in E flat, so it means you're starting your bend here on the 14th fret. If you want the same bend in E, that's generally you know, a great place to start. A solo, if you're playing in E minor, that 15th fret bending up to the root note. So I've taken it back to the beginning of the solo so that we can hear the bends and then the rundown and see what else is going on. So yeah, we actually go all the way down there. So once we've had our bends, um, might even start along those kind of lines, maybe without that, you know, pinching of the of the G string as well, but a cleaner bend. Just going to that note and we've got the kind of thing, that rundown, and these aren't the exact notes that are being played, but just kind of in the ballpark. And you want to make sure that here you're in E flat minor. It's going to be the minor pentatonic shape one. If you just get into that, then you'll be absolutely fine. So let's listen on to a bit more. And we have this kind of, you know, um, that kind of thing in the ballpark. And we had this. Might have been. <laughs> um, might have just been a straight blues rundown. Let's have a quick listen to that again. Yeah. That kind of thing. And we've got kind of a lot of this kind of... Even going natural minor there. 
all of that kind of stuff. So really cool playing here, just mixing it up a little bit. So we'll watch it all the way to the end. And I don't think there's too long left of the performance. Hopefully this guy is about to land safely with his parachute. And it seems like at this performance, Sunfest in 1993 in Canada, there are so many activities that you could do if you attended this particular festival because we get a good shot of all of those during this performance. But let's get back into it and we'll watch it to the end. And there we have it. Right at the end of that solo section, we had a little bit from Miles, Miles Goodwin on lead vocals and that lead guitar at the end. And again, actually a bit of wah wah pedal introduced, but the same kind of thing when we are in that shape. I think we actually had, you know, that kind of thing and you know, maybe trills in there, I can't remember. But there's a lot going on from a lead guitar perspective, but pretty much if you stay in your shapes, even that you know, extended pentatonic shape lower down if you want to, the thing to remember here is that we are in E flat. So uh, don't make that mistake of actually going to E, you wanna be kind of there. So, and that's the key change for the solo. This song, when you listen to it, the original Hot Chocolate version, it doesn't strike you, or at least it doesn't strike me, as a natural progression to move it into that rock and hard rock place, add distorted guitars, but April Wine did a great version of this, and, you know, releasing it the same year, written by Errol Brown and Tony Wilson, by the way, let me just mention that for, you know, the songwriters when Hot Chocolate released that first version. And just talking about the composition, something that I've noticed about it or I hear and it might just be me hearing it but with the Jackson 5 uh, Blame It On The Boogie <laughs> that song has a really similar chorus to it this was 1971 and Blame It On The Boogie was 1977 I think maybe around that kind of time so it is later on but when you analyze that you know we've got the chorus with the same thing, effectively. You've got three calls and then a final response at the, you know, obviously the cadence of the melody is slightly different, but you've got the um, That's the, I mean, that's the framework of this song. So let's have a quick busk of Blame It On The Boogie and we'll start it in uh, D flat. So we've got this. Okay, <laughs> it's going to be high. So we've got. Um, Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the good times. Don't blame it on the boogie. Kind of like that. So you can hear the phrasing, the way that that melody has been put together. It's actually a really similar melody, but it's all about the delivery of the vocal, the timing of it. And it doesn't really matter that the chords are different because it gives you the same kind of feeling. And I mean, we did have, I threw in a A major seventh. I'm not sure whether that's the chord or not. Uh, actually, these chords are probably gonna be uh, different and higher up, especially for the Jackson 5. It's just getting an idea that when you listen to uh, You Could Have Been A Lady, you can almost put in the words from Blame It On The Boogie and they fit in the same place because of the way that it's delivered. And this is something that you'll find with different songs that they sound similar and they remind you of another song. But 
Anyway, thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at. As always, keep those suggestions and requests coming in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!